Hey everybody, Ryan here at E Trailer. Today on our 2014 BMW X1, we're going to be showing you how to install the Eco Hitch trailer hitch receiver. But before we do that, why don't we check it out and make sure that this is going to be uh, the right hitch for you? When it comes to picking out a hitch for your BMW, uh, you know there's there's a handful of different options available. And if it were me, just kind of thinking, okay, if I had a Beamer. And I'm wanting to put a hitch on it, what would probably be the most important thing? And immediately what comes to my mind is the way it's gonna look. Uh, really nice looking vehicles. Um, and you know, to me, I wouldn't want a hitch on there that would be ugly, you know, hanging down and, and just a big eyesore. And with this one, that's not the case. The only thing you're gonna be able to see is a receiver tube opening. And I think it looks pretty clean actually. And I believe that's the case for all the hitches available for the BMW. You know, that's really the only thing you're going to see. Um, but, you know, with that said, one of the big things that separates this one from some of the others is the fact that you can actually remove this receiver tube. So this part here. So you can pull one bolt out. This will slide down and then you won't be able to see anything at all. You want to be able to tell that there's a hitch on there and it'll have a complete factory type appearance. So when you're ready to actually remove the receiver tube, it's not super hard, but not, you know, super quick by any means. There's one bolt we have to pull out and, uh, you know, it's a 15, 16 size socket you're gonna use. It doesn't come with the tool to do this. If you need one though, um, you can grab it at e-trailer. And so you'll pull this out and this is what's uh, holding it in place. So. If it were me, um, and I used my hitch a lot, you know, it don't look bad the way it is, I'd probably just leave it in here. But with that said, you know, in the off season, or if you don't really plan on using the hitch for a while, or, you know, something along those lines, that's probably when I'd pull it out. So you pull this out, and this slides down, and then you can keep this in the back seat or in your garage or whatever you want to do with it. So, good visual here, whenever you have the receiver tube out, this is what the back of your uh, BMW is going to look like. Completely factory, not even going to be able to tell uh, anything's there. There is another hitch available that does something really similar to this, and that's called the Stealth Hitch. Um, it's a little bit easier to get the receiver tube in and out. Um, you don't need a tool, you can just do it by hand. Uh, so, a small advantage there, but with that said, um, this eco hitch is a little more versatile in what you can do with it. And I say that because with the stealth hitch, um, you get your receiver tube, so this piece here, and with just this piece in there, you can't actually tow with it. You can only use accessories like a bike rack or a cargo carrier. If you were wanting to do any towing, you would have to get their tow package. And it's a special type of ball mount that plugs up into the hitch and whenever you use that, that's what's gonna allow you to tow. So that's not the case with the Eco Hitch. With this one, you can use accessories with this one piece or put your regular classic ball mount in there and tow your trailers around as well. Uh, one thing I do like about this setup is the clearance that it's gonna give us. So not only ground clearance, uh, you know, it sits up nice and tight against the bottom of our vehicle, but also bumper clearance. And I know I see a lot of vehicles like this um, using accessories, particularly bike racks. And a lot of times those bike racks are gonna be able to fold up. And if you don't have the proper clearance, you're not gonna be able to fold them up and use that feature. And so shouldn't it be any issues at all uh, with this particular hitch. The receiver tube comes out a little ways and honestly is pretty much about flush with the back of our bumper here. So what that's gonna allow you to do is uh, fold that accessory upright and not have to worry about it uh, contacting the back of your BMW. The hitch is going to have a opening of two inches by two inches. So this is a really common size, arguably the most common size. So a lot of different things are gonna work with it. Um, at the end, we're gonna have a reinforced collar for a little bit of extra support. And it is going to use that standard 5 8 pin and clip. Keep in mind though, hitch doesn't come in, or I'm sorry, a pin and clip doesn't come included with the hitch. 
but if you need one, not a big deal. You can grab it right here at each trailer. So one of the setbacks, if you will, about this hitch is the safety chain openings. They're gonna sit back a little ways and up somewhat high. Uh, they're gonna be a plate style. And the openings aren't huge, but they are gonna give you enough space to use just about any size hook. Kind of tricky getting it in there, but honestly, that's just kind of one of the, um, uh, the sacrifices, you know, you're gonna have to kind of deal with to be able to uh, have it look good. So the trade-off is definitely worth it to me to every now and again have to kind of fight this a little bit more, but uh, you know, consistently have the nice appearance on the back of our X1. As far as the hitch's weight capacities go, it's gonna have some decent numbers. Uh, the maximum gross tongue weight rating is gonna be 300 pounds, and that's gonna be the amount of weight that's pushing down on the hitch. So that's good for those one to three, maybe even four bike racks, uh, depending on the weight of your bikes. Just kind of give you an example. As far as hitches, maximum gross trailer weight rating goes, that's gonna be 2,000 pounds. And that's gonna be the amount of weight that is pulling on the hitch. So the weight of your trailer, plus anything that you might have on it. Uh, I do always like to suggest so, it's never a bad idea just to grab your BMW's owner's manual. That way you can make sure uh, your X1 can pull that much weight safely. And if you are gonna be pulling a trailer, you're gonna want the lights to work on it, you know? That way um, uh, everyone around you knows what's going on, it'll be safe and legal. And to accomplish that, I'd recommend grabbing the Kurt wiring kit, um, and that'll get that job done. Now let's just go ahead, grab a couple of measurements. That way we could try to figure out what hitch mounted accessories would work best. If you go from the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube opening, that's gonna be about 14 inches. So if you're playing on towing, chances are pretty good. You're gonna to need to get a ball mount that has a slight rise in the shank. If you go from the center of the hitch pin hole to the edge of our rear bumper, that's gonna be right at about two and a half inches. And we kind of talked about this earlier, but you can use that measurement to figure out exactly if any of those folding accessories you might have can be stored in an upright position without hitting the back of your X1. But other than that, um, at the end of the day, kind of a good all around hitch. And uh, actually after seeing all the ones available, this one might be my favorite. You know, uh, it, it's pretty versatile in terms of what you can do with it. And it's gonna look really good too, not only when the hitch is actually on like we have it here, but obviously there's no arguing that it looks good when it's off because you can't even see it, right? So uh, kind of a good, like good all around hitch. As far as the installation goes, um, it wasn't too bad. You know, you might think working on a BMW might be super complicated. That really wasn't the case. Um, you do have to remove the fascia, but um, everything's pretty easy to get to. Nothing's really super complicated. It's just a little time consuming. So, you know, set aside, you know, the better part of an afternoon probably to get this done. But as long as you stay focused, really shouldn't give you any issues. Um, if you'd like to stick around and, and watch how uh, I put the hitch on, feel free to. Uh, we'll go ahead, pull into the garage, and do that together now. To so begin our installation, we're going to be here at the back of our BMW, and we're going to need to remove the fascia. Uh, that way we can get our hitch on. So first thing we're going to do is work here in the wheel well area uh, on this back uh, edge. So if you look along this edge, we're gonna have two plastic rivets, and the easiest way to get these out is just to drill out the center. So take a drill bit, just a hair bigger than the size of that hole. We'll drill it out. That one happened to just come out, but a lot of times it won't. We'll see what this one does. See, like that one there, it's gonna come out. But you drill out the center, and then you can take a flathead or a trim panel tool. Actually pull that rivet out like that. And then uh, down here, right below it, if you look right there and right there, we're gonna have two screws. And those are going to be an eight millimeter in size. We'll pull those out. 
Now I want to mention from this point on, anything we do to this side of the vehicle, we're also going to do to the other side because it'll be set up the same way. But with that said, now we're going to have this trim piece. We need to pop this off so you can just you gotta pull up, or push up as best you can and pull out. And that'll release some clips. And then right here, we're gonna have a Torx bit fastener. And that is a, I'm using a T15 to get that out. Let's go ahead and pull this out as well. Now, if you look on the bottom of our fascia, on each side, we're gonna have two more eight millimeter screws. And on the bottom edge of the center of our fascia, kind of working our way over towards the passenger side, we're gonna have a total of four uh, eight millimeter head screws as well. Now, inside of our vehicle, so you open up your hatch, we're gonna need to pull our taillights out. So, <clears throat> give you a reference, we're over here on the passenger side. What you're gonna do is remove this panel, just pops out, and ours doesn't have it, yours might, just over here on the passenger side, you might have a green uh, pull string deal here um, that opens up your fuel, uh, your gas cap cover, uh, if something goes wrong. Ours doesn't have it, but if yours does, you can just pop that out off the keeper here. Um, and then we're gonna have three nuts holding our tail light in. So these two at the bottom, there, there's gonna be one way up top here. It's gonna be tricky to see in here, but we'll be able to see it once we pull the light out. But we'll get those removed using uh, an eight millimeter socket. With these two, what I like to do, because you don't really want to drop it, if you can take it off pretty much completely with your socket, and then you can kind of finish it by hand. That way it doesn't fall fall down into the into the bottom there. So we'll get this last one way up top here. So with those nuts loose, we can pull back on our tail light, and we're going to disconnect it. So there's a connector there. There's a tab you can push down on the center of it, separate it. So there's kind of a better, better look. That's the tab you push down on. And uh, here's the back of the tail light. That's where that third nut was. That so was way up top. So just to give you a better visual, and. Uh, you know, we'll set this off to the side, do the same thing for the driver's side. So now what we can do, uh, let's get our face removed. I put some painter's tape around here, that way we don't scratch anything on accident. But you're gonna start at the corner and just start to peel this off. It actually comes off pretty easy. Up until about this point, you may have to kind of lift up on that. And there's a couple of clips that you might just have to kind of manipulate a little bit to get it to come free. You might have to use a trim tool or a flathead screwdriver to kind of push it down. And then once you get to about this point, you want to go over on the other side and get it to this, uh, get it to this area as well. So I got this side done, and now I can just start to work it off. We'll pull us away from the vehicle. In our case, we don't have any wiring. Uh, you may or may not have a wiring connector back here. If you do, just disconnect it. But with this free, we'll go ahead and set it off to the side. Now we need to loosen up our exhaust a little bit. So we're gonna have two uh, isolator hangers. You can spray them down with soapy water or uh, some type of lubricant. Take a pry bar, big screwdriver, whatever you got. And you're gonna pry the rubber isolator off of the metal portion. These ones are kind of tough to get to, actually. 
super tight. That side worked off. And we're gonna have one over here as well. So I'm kind of curious how I'm gonna do this. So I have nothing really good to pry against, but we'll figure it out actually. This is working pretty good, like this. So that's all there is to that there. Now we're able to get our actual bumper beam removed. So we're gonna have three nuts holding it on, two up top and then one through there. So you can use an 18 millimeter socket and an extension, feed it through that hole. And that will allow us to get the nut off. Do the same deal up here for these two. I already have the other side, the other nuts off, on the driver's side. But we'll go ahead and just slide this off, set it to the side. So now what we're gonna do is you can take your bumper beam and set it upside down, so just like this. So you know it's upside down because our single hole there on this flange is pointed up because that's the top of the beam, this is the bottom. So have it just like this. And then we can take our hitch, right? And we're gonna flip it like this. Okay, because you know, if you think about it, this would be the outside of the car, so our receiver tubes like that. And you're gonna take it put it into this opening. So you might have to kind of, you know, finagle it in there. So we want to slide it uh, roughly into position like so. So if your receiver tube is already bolted to the actual hitch here, like ours was, we're going to remove it. Um, I think we're going to have to have this removed anyway to Kind of continue on. Um, That's a 15 16 size bolt. So we'll grab that and get this removed. So it looks like, if I'm seeing this right, looks like once we unbolt this or take this bolt out rather, we should be able to slide our actual receiver tube up. So uh, I'll keep our hardware with it and just set this off to the side for now. So what you can do now, if you look into the bottom of the hitch here, this opening, there's gonna be a square hole, right? And you can take this carriage bolt and drop it down through like that. Make sure it ends up sitting flat and then I'm going to try to keep all this together and so we can actually see what's going on here still. But on the other side where this bolt comes on out, you're going to take one of these flat washers, put that up, and a nut, and I'm going to get this hand tight for now and we're going to torque this down but I don't know if I have a socket this long, so I might have to find a different type of tool. Uh, I'll try the socket first, probably not gonna work. So I'm gonna find a different tool that we can use, and once I do that, I'll show you, uh, show you what I come up with. So we can come up with a few different options here in order to torque this. If you have a socket that deep that'll fit, great. Chances are pretty good, you're probably not. Um, but one of the things you can use is uh, uh, a deal like this. It's called a crow's foot. Um, that'll allow you to clamp onto it or you know plug your wrench onto it and actually turn that. Um, I'm going to use this. Just feel like you have a better bite. Um, I call it a dog bone. There's some other terms for it as well but um, that's just what I use. So you can use a three quarter inch or 19 millimeter. Both will uh, work just fine. And this will connect to the torque wrench. If you don't have a torque wrench, um, you can get one here at E-Trailer. Or a lot of times you go to your local auto parts store. 
still have one there available to rent. But that'll allow us to get on there and make sure that's torqued down. So what I did was flip our assembly back upright. Um, so now we have the two holes facing up. And I just took some uh, um, tools here, just kind of put them through this hole, <clears throat> through the hitch, just to kind of keep everything somewhat lined up. I think it might make it easier on us. But what you're gonna do on, uh, after this is torqued, you're gonna take a nut and essentially run this probably all the way down or really close to the bottom. And then what we can do is take, um, what you're gonna do is take another flat washer. Then you're gonna take this bracket here, this one has a bend in it. And these are gonna go underneath this portion of our bumper beam deal here. And something like that. Actually, I'll adjust this nut a little bit to kind of help bring it up closer to the bumper beam, that portion. And then <clears throat> you're gonna take another flat washer, put that over. You're gonna take this plate, put that over. Another flat washer. Split lock washer. And finally a nut. Now that we have this uh, practically assembled, we're going to put it back on our car, make sure everything's lined up, and just wanna get at least one or two bolts, uh, or nuts rather, started on each side, hand tight, that way everything will, will be supported. Once everything's supported itself, we'll come back and get the rest of them in and uh, started as well. So with the nuts all hand tight, um, we can tighten on this bolt. So the nut underneath, you're gonna hold with a wrench. Kinda tight, kinda awkward positioning, but it can be done. And then this one, we're gonna tighten it down. So once that's snug, then we can come back with a torque wrench and actually torque it. Um, which we'll, we might do that in a minute at the same time we torque everything else down. But with this one, it looks like you might be able to bend that and get a regular socket on it. If not, we can use some of those other tools we talked about to uh, get it completely torqued. At this point, we'll come back with our torque wrench and torque down uh, all the nuts that's holding our bumper beam and our hitch. Uh, onto the back of our vehicle. So I went ahead and was able to torque uh, this one down and I actually used the crow's foot for this one. I uh, just was able to kind of, you know, get in there a little bit better. But like I said before, you could probably use other things. But other than that, and that's all there is to it to actually getting the hitch on. So from here we can rehang our exhaust and put our fascia back together uh, the opposite way that we removed it. So once you get that exhaust hung, uh, rehung the opposite way, then we'll just grab our fascia and get this going as well. So once your fascia is on and you get to the point where you need to reattach this trim piece, really the only difference instead of the rivets, we're gonna use these plastic push pins. So these just get pushed in and then you push on the head of it and that'll push it flat and keep our trim piece from coming off. And if you're planning on using your hitch right away or sometime in the future, or you just wanna leave your receiver tube on there, you just slide it up and put that bolt back in and, and tighten it down. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Eco Hitch trailer hitch receiver on our 2014 BMW X1.